Today we're going to be showing you a raw workflow for shooting images on your iPhone. Today we're going to be working with two different apps, Halid, which is what we use to take the images, and Darkroom, which is what we're going to be used to edit them. A couple of notes to working with raw images on your iPhone. One is that you can't take raw images using the portrait lens. Secondly, raw images take up more space on your phone. It's naturally. The raw images are storing all the information that sensor is capturing, so these can be up to 10 or 11 megabytes per image. When they're stored in your camera roll, it actually is storing two images. So it's storing both a RAW and a JPEG in most cases. You're really gonna have to make sure that you're using the proper editing software to interpret that RAW photo. Okay, so we're in the beautiful Prospect Park and I'm gonna be taking three different photos. The first photo we're gonna take is just with the default camera app. I'm gonna use a single tap to expose based off the iPhone. Take the photo. There we go, wow, what a handsome guy. All right, now we're gonna take the photo with Halid. So when you open Halid, you've got this little toolbar at the bottom that you can tap to expose some of your options. So you can set the white balance, you can choose what you want if you wanna do daylight, cloudy, tungsten balance. We're just gonna go with auto for the sake of ease here. You can set the ISO, and you'll see in the top right-hand corner you can control the shutter speed. One of the downsides of working with Halid, at least it appears to me, is that face detection doesn't work like it does in the iPhone's default app. So when I'm tapping to pull focus, the default camera app is trying to find a face and then it's locking in on your eyes, which is what you want. You want the eyes to always be in the focus. All right, so I'm gonna open up Halid to take a look at both of the photos that we just took. So you're probably gonna notice that with your raw images, they may not look as sharp as what you're used to, and that's because the iPhone default app is doing some magic while you're taking the photo. It's doing some sharpening, it's blending images in some cases, and it's also doing noise reduction. There's gonna be more saturated image. It's a little bit sharper. There's some sort of gelling a little bit with the noise reduction. It's really subtle, but this is just a photo that's kind of more ready to go right from the jump. Now if we switch to our raw image, you'll notice it's a little bit more flat. And if you zoom in and you start to get to the details, it's kind of a softer look. It's a little bit more of a filmy grain to it and it doesn't have as much saturation on it. So we're under a bridge, which is where this guy usually hangs out. And we're gonna try to get a good photo of him, a good portrait. So we're gonna bring it down a little bit, again, to try to capture the mood of being under a bridge and grab that shot. So we're gonna open up Darkroom and sort of play around with the image a little bit you'll see that we're able to bring that up and it's not causing any noise in the shadows and you're able to really resolve some of the details that was lost and having it underexposed. What I really personally enjoy about shooting raw on the iPhone is that when you do apply filter, the colors just seem a little bit more rich and the photos just, they just look more natural. So we'll apply this filter onto it and let's dial it back because you know nobody uses a photo filter all the way up. So we'll go about halfway. To me, this feels like a better portrait, one that I would be more likely to use than the one that came out of the iPhoto, which again, just felt a little bit more digitized. So at the end of the day, your in-phone camera is probably gonna be fine for most practical applications, especially when you have a lot of available light. But when you really wanna use RAW is when you want that control back over your image, when you wanna control your highlights if it's overexposed, or if your shadows are underexposed, you can resolve a lot of that detail, and you're getting a lot more color in a RAW image. The best way to really understand shooting RAW is just going out and doing it, seeing which applications work best for you. Just go out and try it. 